welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have my I have my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix, we are ba we are back. You, you may notice that the overlay is a little bit different. Well, that's because the provider of my previous overlay um, had, had decided that they're going to close up shop on Monday. So I had to scramble to get a new one set up. This is a work in progress, but it is but um, in the process of that, you may see that I put it, my, I put my avatar in the corner so that I could maybe qualify as being a PNG tuber now. Um, because I recently fin I recently finished upgrading this co the computer that I have with Zan's help, so there is the possibility that there may be some changes coming to the channel in the coming weeks. That being s said, one of the goals that I have and I will be working to this, is to dip into VTubing by the end of 2023. I'm giving myself that bit that bit of a that bit of a leeway because I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a um exhaustive process. One with a lot of bumps in the road as most investments usually are. But that is a story for another day, and I will cover that when I do an inevitable um state of the temple thing later on. So Last week, we tackled the class features and subclass features of the Thalm attack. And we initially thought that the Thalm attack was going to be the, the wizard equivalent, which it kind of is, given the ridiculous amount of spells that it gets. But yeah. the conclusion that we came down to is that it has far more in common with the elementalist class in Guild Wars 2. I know that they call them careers in the, in Guild Wars. Old habits die hard, that's all. However, with within that there is a, there we had decided that we were going to split it in two because covering the class features and covering the arcane spell lists which of the, of which there are technically five, even though they're not as lengthy as we thought. It's just four elements in the superlative spells. But doing all that in one go would have been pushing it a little. We barely got away with that um, with that amount of stuff when we covered the mimic, and even yep. then we were kind of stretching things. I love the mimic as a cl as a class, but. The idea of covering a spell list and covering class features, I think, is going to be a bit much. It was easier with the Mechromancer because the, a lot of the effects were a little more succinct. Mm -hmm. With the, but with the with the mimic, um, I'd say I'd say medium range. Yeah, naturalist was about the same medium range. But I knew for I knew from the get go that the Thalmatech, we there's no way we were going to be able to summarize it that quickly. Yep. We can do a lot of things here in the temple, but we are not miracle workers. But I think bef I think before we even get into the arcane spell list, we should give a bit a bit of a recap as to our thoughts on the um on the Thalmatech, just as a class, since this is the only time we're doing this as a two parter. Yeah. So, uh, honestly, I find the Thalmatech really interesting in the way that uh, not only do you get to hot swap between all of the different elements within the arcane tree using your magic USBs, um, they get additional programming on them, uh, a, a program you can execute, and... There's also a lot of really cool stuff that is very clearly Thalmatech. Meant, you know, it, it it feels at home on the Thalmatech, but since it isn't exclusive, you can take it over to other classes that are uh, adjacent. And it's like, for example, Arcane Infusion definitely sounds like something 
that should just stick with the Thalma tech because you're adding an element to armor or weapons. But it's non-exclusive. So you can absolutely take it to a field knight, a soldier, a smuggler, mm -hmm. a, a necromancer, anyone, to have them do those infusions instead. Or, wor or worse, a mimic. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about that already. Yeah. But I, I only say that because if there's any class that is the troll class in this thing, it's the fucking mimic. Yeah, and you were already suggesting a mimic plus shade collared uh, um, uh, specialization. Yes, I was. Yes, I was because that because I ha I have a soft spot for builds that could be considered annoying and. One one might say, does does that mean you does that mean you mained May when you were when you were playing Overwatch? Well, the br the brief bit of time that I did play that I did play Overwatch, actually, no, I did I didn't. I mained Zenyatta because I cannot ignore I cannot ignore the call the call of playing to my gimmick. <laughs> I mean, technically, playing May would have also been playing to your gimmick since you know she's ice. Yeah. But I, but I also, I also found Zenyatta's um, orb setup to be to be far more attractive to me, especially since he's one of the rare characters that, as as I mentioned in the past, you play you actually felt like he has a kit, not a um, not a script, for lack mm -hmm. of a better term. Um, Shammy put it best when he said that characters in that game are. The majority are meant to be played as and not with. Yeah, but that's getting on the rails, and we will end up talking about that a little bit down the road. But with that, in, with that in mind, I am not taking back the Ga the Gaia memory sl slash whatever the, whatever those USB things were for Ultraman Trigger. <laughs> it's, bit of an aside. I can't help but wonder if, if if somebody who if whoever has been handling the last few Ultraman series is a is a fan of Common Rider. Uh, I mean, there's probably a lot of cross pollination, to be honest, Monk. Well, as as some people pointed out, Zet used used a set of three medals. <laughs> mm. Uh, trigger. Utilized utilized essentially USB sticks to the point where to the point where seventy three Nami made Gaia me made made his own Gaia memories out of them. Mm. They're called the guts hyper keys, by the way. My, all right. And the upcoming one is using cards. Yeah, they're just you know an entire um, an entire. Era name behind, Monk. Mm -hmm. These are Heisei Ultraman, but we're in Rewa. Well, they're still Heisei Ultraman. What? <laughs> <laughs> and these are just called Dimension cards. So, I mean, yeah. Like... I'm just, say I'm just saying, if we end up coming to a situation of of someone shape shifting into past Ultraman, um, I'm go, I'm going to call shenanigans. But ra once again, rails. So mm -hmm. bef we for this for this part two, we are going to be covering the spell list that is that is within the arcane trees, or rather the arcane realm. And given what we mentioned with the USBs last week, of course there are four types. There is technically a fifth type, which is the superlative spells, i.e., the fuck you button. The biggest fuck you button to ever fuck you button, yes. Just don't fuck up with it, because, um... Then it really becomes a fuck everybody button. <laughs> yes, it does. Oh. And we start with air, referred to as the magic of the Everbreeze. Not to be confused with the Everlight. <laughs> and we'll be starting with the novice spells. The first is an exclusive one called Biting Winds. Difficulty is hard four, range is eight squares, duration is channel one or three rounds, cooldown is three rounds. 
unleash a continual force of air from your Magiductor that wraps around the target. If the target attempts to move out of the field, they take an immediate 2, 3, 4, or 5d6 air damage and must perform a con contested or canting balance check. If they fail, they take an additional 10, 15, 20, or 25 air damage and are grasped at th as the winds grow higher. They take an additional 1d6 plus 4 damage for each turn they remain inside. Ranged attacks made into or out of the area are done so with minus 3 bonus dice. If you cannot continue channeling, the air dissipates. Something I'd like to uh, clarify, actually, before we go much further, Monk. Mm -hmm. um, I asked a question last session about what the USBs actually do for you, considering you do have a limited spell list, but the USB says, well, you just get spells from that tree. Um, we had confirmation uh, that you gain all both known and unknown spells from the USB equipped. So even if you have not selected out of your... When we, when we dis discover at the end of this, 21, 26, 26 total spells. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, some of those are the mystic spells you get just for the beginning of the class. But if you equip the air USB and you're, you've got spell advancement up to Magus, you can then cast every spell under air up to make its level whether you knew them or not now all the other elements you can only cast the spells you know in that element but you switch out the element usb and now you can cast all the spells from that elemental tree and now all the air spells you can cast are only the air spells that you know mm -hmm. so that's how the usbs work here which is honestly fucking broken if you take elemental duelist then again, if you take Elemental Duelist, you have every idea of what you're doing or no idea what you're doing. <laughs> oh, so next is Gust, which is not exclusive. The elements of air can be a large, a large destructive force as well as a helpful breeze. No difficulty, range is 10, 15, 20, or 25 squares. Instant duration, no cooldown. You summon a small gust of wind. It can be used for most anything you can think of that you can use a gust of wind for, such as knocking something small over, putting out a flame, causing slight distractions, pushing yourself to forward in the void. Airbending. I mean, minor airbending, but yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. But also because it has no cooldown, um, that means it has no charge state. Yep. So, you could cast this infinitely to try and get yourself back onto the ship if you've been blown out the fucking airlock. Mm -hmm. Wonder if you could use it to trip somebody. Mm. If they're small enough, maybe. But I, I think it's not massive enough to uh, move larger objects. That's why it's moving you in the void mm -hmm. where there's no gravity. So next is Tempest Strike, also non-exclusive. It, it is an Arcanting attack. Range is five squares. Duration is instant. Cooldown is two rounds. Direct a torrent of air at an adversary. They take one, two, three, or four d6 air damage and must perform a car contested Arcanting muscle check. On a failure, they are moved forward or back five squares from you and take additional force damage equal to your mentality, or two times mentality at Magus level. So basically, you do damage no matter what, but then you can also push or pull and do extra damage. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then Void Well, which is exclusive. Hard for difficulty, range is eight squares in a five by five area. Duration is channel one, or th three rounds. Cooldown is four rounds. Tear into the arcane realm in a chosen square. The realm begins sucking in all beings within a 5x5 five five area field centered on it. Everyone in that field must perform a hard four arcanting balance muscle check. If they fail, they are pulled closer to the center of the square 
and take 2, 3, 4, or 66 plus mentality force damage. If they pass, they move to a square outside and adjacent to the field, and their movement ends. If they start or end their turn in the center of the field, they take an additional 3, 4, 5, or 8 d6 damage and are launched in a direction you choose up to 7 squares from the center. Any item worn or tied down will be sucked into the void and lost. Not worn or tied down. Not worn. So, black hole. A minor black hole, yes. Mm -mm. It's just that when things get sucked into the center, they get ejected. Except if it's a tiny item that is not worn or tied down. Mm -hmm. I imagine if it's bigger than a person, it won't it won't be lost. Yeah, that covers the that covers the um, novice, novice air spare salt air spells. Then we get to apprentice, and first we have condensed blast, which is non exclusive. Hard difficulty fifteen to twenty. 10, 15, or 20 squares of range. Instant duration, 2 round cooldown. Deal 15, 20, or 25 damage to a target. Launch them up to 10, 15, or 20 squares from their current position and inflict prone. Have fun flying. <laughs> um, you know, give, given, that, given that it doesn't state the, um, the direction... Um, you could, pr if you're on, if you're on terra firma, you could probably use this as your up button. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. You know, just, you know, just, ha just target the enemy and say, bit of advice, don't look down. <laughs> because, especially if, th especially if you do this, even at the smallest amount, um, you're ten squares is about fifty feet. Yeah, you're launching them fifty feet in the air. Which, yeah, the um, I hope you like fall damage. <laughs> you want fall damage because that's how you get fall damage. Mm -hmm. Let's Unless see. you're a field knight. Let's see, nope. Then you just do a superhero landing. <laughs> oh. So next is overcharged Tesla coil. So you you summon an Arcan an Arcanatech coil. Difficulty hard four. Range ten, fifteen, or twenty squares. Five by five area. Duration channel two. Four rounds. Cooldown four rounds. Launch a coil into a square, summoning a large Tesla tower with a five by five area field. As it first lands, it inflicts 3, 4, or 76 plus mentality electrical damage and stun to all beings in the field. If you channel the spell, it unleashes a blash of electrical damage on each of your turns, inflicting plus mentality and electrical damage. After any being hit by two blasts is inflicted with stun, any other electrical effects or spells cast in this field, adept level and below, are cancelled and absorbed by the coil. Nice. Oh, it's... You can use it as a shield. Mm-hmm. And that, I can understand why that's an exclusive spell. So then we have yeah. Unchecked Current. Difficulty is average 3. Range is 6, 8, or 10 squares. Duration is channel 1, 3 rounds. Cooldown is 3 rounds. Target an adversary within range and unleash a constant current of lightning from your hands. This attack inflicts 4, 6, or 10d6 electrical damage. Each turn, while the channel is maintained, you deal your mentality, virtue, and electrical damage, or 2 times mentality at Magus level. You may cancel the channel as an action and, to, and force your target to perform a contested or canting muscle check. On a failure, they take three times player level in damage and are inflicted with stun. Change power! <laughs> Your uh, Star Wars Episode Three reference, everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, at ade at adept, you gain actually, actually, and yes, some. Um, 
Uncheck Current is our last apprentice level spell. And that that was non exclusive, so Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun doing multiclassing with that. Uh oh, next is Adept tier, and the first one is Lightning Strike, so break out your Akadaka jokes. Difficulty is average three, range is two times movement, then th three by three or five by five. Duration instant, cooldown three rounds. Jump to a square within range, appearing in a great flash of lightning. All adversaries in within the 3x3 three three or 5x5 five five area field take 30 damage and are forced to perform a contested Arcanting observation check. On a failure, they are inflicted with the blind condition for 2 or 3 rounds. This jump ignores reactionary strikes. I was kidding about the superhero landing. Blinded by the light. <laughs> That's my only joke for it. Yeah. Also, it's not exactly just a superhero landing, Monk. It's a Thor superhero landing. Mm-hmm. Oh. Or what dirty clanners would call a summoner. Wait, wrong game. And you had to talk about dirty clanners. That's a double sin there, Monk. You know what? When when a certain day comes in, we'll probably I'll probably end up doing a watch party about that battle. You know the <laughs> one. I do know the one. Oh. <laughs> uh. um, next, quicken steps. Difficulty is easy two. Range ten squares. Duration is instant twenty minutes. Cooldown is five minutes. Target an ally within range and grant them double base movement speed for the duration. While affected, they may run up or along walls as well as upside down on a ceiling. May target up to three or six allies. Imagine a field knight getting quickened steps. Or a soldier. Mm -hmm. Or a combat medic. Or a mech Just, Just imagine any of the classes getting it. Monk. Yeah. I bring up field knights because they're the mo because they are extremely mobile motherfuckers. Yes, our rocket tanks. I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the th the third and fi and final adept spell is summon vortex. Difficulty hard four, range fifteen squares, either a five by five or seven by seven area. Duration, channel 2, 4 rounds, cooldown, 4 rounds. Trace the Rune of Shattering into the sky and summon a Vortex Tornado onto the battlefield. All beings within the area field immediately take 25 or 50 air damage. The struck individuals must perform a hard 4 balance, dodge, or muscle check. On a failure, they are sucked into the Vortex and take additional 15 or 30 air damage. On subsequent turns, they may attempt a hard 4 flight check to jump out of the Vortex's grip. Those trapped inside, as the spell ends, take an additional 20 or 40 force damage as they hit the ground. <coughs> you ain't in Kansas anymore, bitch! <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This just reminds me of, of the Tetra Wind spell from Disgaea. I can I can certainly see it. Oh, then we get to the mech. I'd like to point out all of the adept spells are non-exclusive. Yep. Let's see, then we get to the mega spells. The first one being Aura of Cat. You and it's exclusive. Mm -hmm. Wrap yourself in the aura of. Oh, hang on, let me get, let me, I'm jumping ahead a bit. Difficulty, average 3, range is self, area of 11 by 11, duration is instant, 3 rounds, cooldown is 3 rounds. Wrap yourself in the aura of the Great Dragon Kat, causing lightning to strike all beings within range. All beings, except self, take 40 electrical damage. On subsequent turns, where they start, end, or move through the aura, they must perform a tough 5 dodge check. If they fail, they take an additional 8d6 electrical damage as lightning strikes them. 
Allies hit by the initial lightning take half damage and need not perform the dodge check to avoid the lightning later. There's a little bit of collateral here, but what if you have all of your friends with resistance to lightning? Um, you want to know what I'm reminded here? You, mm. you summon the thunder planes. Yeah, but I can dodge a hundred bolts. <laughs> I've done it. Mm -hmm. Too many fucking times. Mm -hmm. oh. Then we have the non-exclusive Magus spell. Chains of Karama. Difficulty is hard 4. Range self. Area of 15 by 15. Duration is channel 1. Then 4 rounds. Cooldown is 4 rounds. Call down a great bolt of lightning that transforms itself into unbreakable chains of energy that launch out towards all adversaries within the area field and inflict 40 damage. If an adversary attempts to go beyond 9 squares of you or is forcefully moved beyond that range, they must perform a tough 5 muscle check. On a failure, they are stunned until the end of their next turn and take an additional 30 electrical damage. Huh. I know we've joked about Chain Lightning. I didn't think we'd be talking about it literally. It's home game, Monk. It's a warrior's home game, except AoE style. Mm -hmm. And yes, that was a Final Fantasy XIV reference for those of you paying attention. Mm -hmm. So, that covers the air spells. I figured that at higher levels it would go from just, blow just blowing air to lightning. Why? Because I've played Golden Sun at least once. Well, more than at least once, but you get the point. And Grandia as well. Oh. And then we get to Earth. Referred to as the Magic of the Majestic Expanse. Okay. So first we start off with the Novice Spells. And the first one is Earthen Enchant. Most metals have some form of the earth element within them. Difficulty average 3, range is 5 squares, duration instant, 3 rounds, cooldown is 2 rounds. As an extra action, you may increase an ally's armor level by 1 to, at most, heavy armor. If the ally targeted is wearing heavy armor, adversaries roll with minus 1, 1, 2, or 2 bonus dice on attacks against them. I.e. Mi minus one, minus one, minus two, minus two bo bonus dice. Yep. So even if you've got heavy armor, there's still there's still benefits. Yes. And that's non-exclusive. Mm-hmm. Then rock spike, which is exclusive. It's an arcanting attack, range is 5 squares, duration is instant, cooldown is 3 rounds. Drive the Magiductor into the ground, shooting a metal and rock spike into the target. Upon successful cast, deal 10, 15, 20, or 30 piercing damage, and inflict armor break on the target for 2 rounds. Rock spike turns you into Zero's downstab from Mega Man Zero Four. 4. Yep. Of course, you can only... Get that downstab if you get the EX skill associated with it, but that's easy. You just make sure that the the uh, weather for that stage is the least beneficial to you, and you will always get the EX skill for the boss. Well, so Mega Man, well, it's Mega Man Zero, and calling any part of it easy might be pushing things. No, Mega Man Zero is really easy. Mm -mm. Oh, everything's relative. <laughs> Easier so. than X7. Not going there. Mm. Oh. Burn to the ground. I already did that joke this week. Yeah, but not here. Fair. So next is Shattered Ground. Difficulty hard 4. Range self within 5x5 five five area. Duration instant. Cooldown 3 rounds. Slam your fist into the ground, causing a ripple effect through the earth. All adversaries within the 5x5 five five area field take 2, 3, 4, 5d6 plus mentality 
in damage and must succeed on an average 3 dodge balance check. If they fail, they are knocked prone. Well, it's, an, it's Earth spells, so we gotta do the Earthquake. It's Donkey Kong's down pound. Mm -hmm. Everybody, go pick up some Smash Brothers and press down an A. It's Donkey Kong's down pound. Also, I get the feeling this would be the preferred spell of Amelia Watson. She doesn't want to hurt your mom. She just wants to ground pound them. <laughs> oh. Next is Summon Wall, so Pink Floyd's favorite spell. But we're just we're not just another brick in the wall. <laughs> Difficulty, none. Range, 10 squares. Duration, instant, 20 minutes. Cooldown, 20 minutes. Summon a 3, two, so a two, three, four, or 5 by 1 line to, sp to spawn a wall made of either earth or metal based on the floor below you. It can be up to 5 squares tall. The wall lasts for 20 minutes until destroyed or until you cancel it. This can even be used in combat. However, the difficulty goes to easy 2 and takes one channel phase to cast. The wall has either 50, 80, 100, or 150 hit points. It's immediate cover. Mm -hmm. And it can be up to five squares tall. So a 25-foot wall, that's that's good. That would certainly be interesting to to utilize on a space station. It is immediate. It's immediate cover. It's all. It's also immediate. They need to turn around and get the ladders. Or if you do it in a corridor, that the whole corridor is closed off. Mm -hmm. Sorry, pool's closed. Yep. <laughs> and I can understand why Summon Wall is an exclusive spell. Magis, Magis Soldier with this spell to give themselves a sniper perch. <laughs> yeah, just get... Just... Never Get him up. Just get him up there, and that, and then just, and then just let him pick off. Mm -hmm. Never said it couldn't be right under you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the um, I double checked. It doesn't say how. Aside from the HP of the wall, it doesn't say how thick it's supposed to be. One, it's uh, one square thick. Two, three, four by one, or two, three, four, five by one. Close close enough, I suppose. Close enough, I suppose. Um, so the next is the apprentice tier earth spells, and the first one is armored crush. Armored core. Giant me metal pieces of armor, monk. Mm -hmm. It it was un inevitable. I would say that. Touch. So st right, difficulty is hard four. Range touch. Duration is instant three rounds. Cooldown is three rounds. Touch a target's armor, corrupting its earthen molecules. The armor begins to crush the wearer, inflicting the player level in force damage and lowering their armor by one. This armor reduction may only affect the same target once per combat. On subsequent turns, you may channel this spell to inflict an additional 2, 3, 4, or 66 force damage. Adversaries must may attempt a contested arcanting muscle check to resist the damage. Um, you know how, but you know how back in the day, um, rust monsters were a good w were a good way to say fuck you f for the GM. Mm-hmm. This is a good way to say fuck to say fuck you to anybody who's in a well, a lot of folks in armor because everybody's going to be using armor. Yep. I um. I have a song for this monk, but you're not going to like it. Try me. Oh, I'm probably not follow gonna... me, oh, follow me. I've got your spine, and now I will crush. <laughs> I was trying to avoid that. Well, it's too late. <sighs> anyway, next is the sandworm. And next is the sandworm, or a call of the sandworm, which leads me to ask one question. Do we have worm sign? Worm sign. <laughs> Chai Hulud. 
So, difficulty is average 3, range is 15 squares, duration is channel 2, cooldown is 30 minutes. Upon successful calling of the sandworm, it bursts from the ground and obeys your orders for up to 20 minutes. It has the ability Sandstorm, which, which releases a passive storm around the worm, inflicting the blind condition on beings within two squares of the worm. You may perform an average three balance check to ride atop the worm. Riding it grants you 25 squares of movement and allows you to tunnel underground. The worm is seven squares long and two squares wide. So it's a baby sandworm. Mm -hmm. This is the one that you would drown to get the waters of life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if nobody gets that reference, that's okay. And understandably, Call of the Sandworm is an exclusive. Turning you into a Fremen, son. Mm -hmm. Now, our, our last apprentice spell is Earthen Steps. Difficulty is average 3, range is self, duration is instant, 15 minutes, cooldown is 1 minute. Contort the earthen or metal ground beneath your steps, raising it to meet you in the air. You may run and perform jumps with this skill active, and the ground will always be where you need it. You may move up to a height equivalent of four times your base movement. You may also use an extra action to craft, to craft stairs and platforms for your allies. That's not broken. <laughs> No, nope. <laughs> it's it's also it would also be a way to get to give people in some easy access to high ground. Make Obi Wan proud. <laughs> and that's a non-exclusive. Next is the uh, next is the adept tier, and we start with Earth Gauntlets, which is exclusive. Difficulty average three, range is self. Duration is instant, then five or seven rounds. Cooldown is five rounds. Summon two gauntlets of earth onto your hands. These gauntlets use your arcanting to attack and inflict three or five d6 earth and bludgeoning damage each. While wielding these weapons, your power is equal to your mentality, and you gain plus one bonus level in the dual wielding skill. Hey, hey, hey! You want to be an earthen brawler? I'd make a I'd make a joke about the boulder, but no, nope, too easy. Well, you know what they say, monk. A rolling boulder gathers no moss. <laughs> oh, and obviously, Earth Gauntlets is an exclusive. Next is quicksand grenades. Difficulty average, range is self, because it's a thrown thing. Duration instant, three rounds. Cooldown, three rounds. Inscribe the Expanse rune on a grenade and toss it. Upon landing, the grenade explodes and does its normal damage. The area field of the grenade turns into a pit of quicksand. All beings with, within must perform a hard four balance or muscle check. On failure, their movement is reduced to 1, and they take 3 or 5d6 plus 5 earth damage. This check happens every time an adversary starts within or ends their turn in the quicksand. Pocket sand! <laughs> in the most extreme way possible. Yeah. Oh. Dale Gribble would be proud. Oh, excuse me. Rusty Shackleford. Mm-hmm. And lastly for Adept, we have Shattering Strike. It's an Arcanting attack, melee range, duration is instant, two rounds, cooldown is three rounds. On success, inflict three times weapon damage and shatter the armor of your target. This removes the bonuses their armor grants for two rounds. If you strike an adversary with light, two hits, or, th or medium, three hits armor, allies get an auto-hit die on attacks against them. <laughs> and um, this is uh, this is something to give to the field knight. <laughs> yep. Especially since 
Quicksand grenades and shattering strike are non-exclusive. Indeed. So next we have the Magus tier Earth spells, starting with Dolmar's Unending Prison. Difficulty is hard 4, range 15 squares, duration channel 2, 5 rounds, cooldowns 5 rounds. Large metallic bars burst around a targeted individual, trapping them in place. The individual trapped inside takes 4 times power in force damage and is grasped. Each round the spell is channeled, the unit takes an additional 15 force damage. They must also perform a contested power check. On a success, the number of rounds channeled is reduced to one. Is reduced by one, sorry. If this causes them to escape the prison, they may take 15 earth damage, but may perform their turn as normal. I'm going to trap you in a giant box and crush you to death. Mm-hmm what that boils down to. Oh, yeah. And ne next, which is an exclu is a exclusive, is Lashing Strikes of Grothon. Difficulty is hard 4, range is 20 squares, duration is instant, cooldown is 5 rounds. Send Lashing Tendrils against all adversaries within 20 squares of you. All adversaries take 40 damage and are knocked prone. They cannot get up from prone until the end of your next turn. That just sounds like you're tentacle graping them, but with extra steps. Well, it's like a bet. It's like a better sounding Evard's black tentacles. <laughs> so then we get to fire, the magic of the eternal flame. So the na the so we start with novice tier and actually all all of the novice tier fire spells are non exclusive. So first we have Brand of Flame. Difficulty average three. Range is five squares. Duration is instant, two rounds, cooldown is three rounds. Mark an adversary with a rune brand. Allies attempting to hit that target with a spell or attack gain an auto hit die. If successful, they deal an additional 1, 2, 3, or 4 d6 fire damage. The brand reacts to other element types. A water attack slash spell produces steam, boiling the adversary's body. They take an additional 10, 15, 20, or 25 damage and are knocked prone. Air fans the flames, dealing an additional 15, 10, 25, 35 da damage. These elements remove the mark. Which means Earth does not. Mm-hmm. Nor do any other elements. It's yep. just water and air. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's um antipode bomb when you do it with water. Mm -hmm. So next is fire blast. Our difficulty our canting attack range six squares duration instant cooldown two rounds. Upon a successful hit. Deal 1, 2, 3, or 4 d6 fire damage. The target is inflicted with burning. So you're good old fireball. Just yeah. without the AoE. Yes. Maybe so, Scorching Ray would be a better uh, representation then? Given the range, yeah. So next is Flame Enchant. Difficulty average 3, range 5 squares. Duration instant, two rounds, cooldowns, two rounds. Upon a successful cast, up to one, two, three, or four chosen weapons become engulfed in flame. This allows the user to modify one die result, maybe used on a third die, by one, and on successful attack it inflicts an additional one, two, three, or four d6 fire damage. It's another meaning to flame on! Mm-hmm. Come on, everybody, everybody loves putting their weapons on fire. Fire! Let's see, then, light object. Difficulty, none. Range, 10 squares. Duration, instant, 30 minutes. Cooldown, 1 minute. Instantly light a small item, such as a torch, an oil spill, a mechanized burner, with flame. The object stays lit until it burns out, or 30 minutes, whichever comes first. The flame does not spread to other objects and cannot be extinguished by water. May maintain two lit items at once. 
Since it brought up the oil spill, that'll give you a reason to get creative. And give people the hot foot. And it doesn't spread, so just the oil spill will catch fire. It doesn't spread, and you can't put it out. I know. Just imagine if that oil spill li linked all the way back to a giant tank. Like it was all one continuous form of oil. Mm -hmm. It would light all of that. Or if you can find some, use gunpowder. The question is, would a single grain of gunpowder count as an object, and thus none of the other grains of gunpowder would catch? I think yes, that's I'm, be be I'm being rules lawyery about it, Monk. You already know. I think that would be a GM call kind of situation. I know. Um, Besides, we... if you really want gunpowder to go off, just plane blast it. Mm -hmm. uh, although what would be what would be really funny is using this on to light, say, the good the good old message in a bottle. Eh. But next is the <clears throat> Apprentice tier spells. The first one we have is Channeled Inferno. Difficulty hard 4, range 10 squares with a 3x3 three three area. Duration channel 2, 3 rounds. Cooldowns 4 rounds. A Flaming Inferno rips from the Arcane Realm and lands in a 3x3 three three area field within range. This spell inflicts 3, 4, or 5d6 plus mentality fire damage. On subsequent turns during the channel, the Inferno may move up to the caster's base movement in squares. This Inferno inflicts damage to all creatures it passes over. The magic may be dispersed as an action. If done so, it deals its damage to all beings within a 5x5 five five area field. It then leaves a fire field in that area for two rounds that deals five fire damage and inflicts burning on those that start or end their turn in it. I can't resist the temptation, Monk. Burn, baby, burn. Channel Inferno. Burn, <laughs> baby, burn. So, I'd say that... I would say that's our D&D-style fireball, but since you can control it, it's a better D&D... It's better than the D&D fireball, which is just a glorified grenade. It's a glorified shoot out this ball and it blows up, yes. Mm-hmm. This is more of... Fire! <laughs> As I already... You know. yep. <sighs> so, next is our first exclusive fire spell, Phoenix Charge. Difficulty is average 3, range is self, duration is instant, 2 rounds, cooldown is 2 rounds. Take the form of a great phoenix and charge up to 2 times mentality in squares in the direction of your choosing. May pass through adversaries and players. Any adversary charged through takes the player's level in fire damage as inflicted with burning. A flame trail area field is left in the line charged through. Any adversary that starts or ends their turn in the flame trail takes five fire damage. But it doesn't hurt your friends. Nope. Which is nice. <sighs> I can see why that'd be exclusive, because otherwise I'd be giving that to the Field Knight. <laughs> the class that does a whole lot of charging anyway, so why don't we set it up? Why don't we give it a <laughs> blazing charge? Yep. This uh, is just Ultra Stars and Stripes, Monk. Mm -hmm. Stars and Stripes! Yep. So next is Rapid Fire Embers, and we're back to non-exclusive. Difficulty is hard 4, range is 15 squares, duration is instant, cooldown is 4 rounds. Summon 2, 3, or 4 flaming embers that circle around you. You may target up to 2, 3, or 4 targets or items. After choosing all targets at your command, the embers will fire towards them. Each ember does 1, 1, or 2d6 fire damage. If used on a flammable item, such as a bonfire, it will light the item with a fire that cannot be extinguished or spread, lasting five minutes. If all embers are used against the same adversary, they inflict the burn condition. So, 
This is essentially Art of the Phoenix Flames from Ninja Gaiden 2, except it's actually useful. Yes. Dear God, that spell sucked. So I'm looking ahead, Monk. Mm -hmm. uh, unless I'm missing something, Phoenix Charge is the only um, exclusive fire spell. Nope, you're not missing any. And speaking of which, time for Adept. So the first Adept one that we have is Meteor Strike. Difficulty is an Arcanting Attack. Range is Melee. Duration is Instant. Cooldown, three rounds. Perform an attack against the against the target within range. Upon a successful hit, inflict two times weapon damage on the target. The target must perform a contested Arcanting Muscle Check. On a failure, they are launched up to your mentality in squares backward. Your next turn, as an extra action, you may call a Meteor Shower on the enemy who failed the Muscle Check. The Meteor Shower fi falls in a 5x5 five five area field centered on the target and inflicts your weapon damage on all beings within that field. This is a much better version of Meteor Swarm. <laughs> this is the version that turns your your adversary into a targeting laser. Mm-hmm. And granted, the range is melee for the initial one, but um, it's certainly going to be a fun one. Mm-hmm. So next is Solar Flare. Wait, what? <laughs> Why is Solar Flare a depth level? The Z Fighters learn it immediately. Difficulty is average three. Range is twelve squares. Duration is instant. Cooldowns four rounds. Radiate a blinding light towards all beings within range who can see you. They perf they must perform a hard four observation check. On a failure, they are blinded for two rounds. Even Yamcha knows solar flare. Come on now. <laughs> and the last adept spell it for fire is spark the engines. Difficulty is average three. Range is 10 squares. Duration channel 2, 5 rounds. D cooldown is 4 rounds. Choose an engine within range and spark its core with the Eternal Flame. If used on an allied vehicle, it gains an additional 4 or 6 squares of movement and a finesse increase of plus 1 for the duration. When used on an adversary vessel, the difficulty goes up to tough 5. On a success, it inflicts an instant 25 or 50 damage on the vehicle, then cancels. So either help your engine or blow theirs up. Mm -hmm. um, imagine using that in a in a vehicle fight. <laughs> yep. Or in or in or in some some equi some equivalent to a swoop or pod or pod racing event <laughs> as a good way to cheat when the cameras aren't on. <laughs> I bring I bring up I bring up something like that simply because well, when you're racing at that level of speed, accidents happen. As simple but proved. And even if I even if you don't want me to use episode one in that regard, fine. I'll u I'll use the many many accidents that could happen in either F one. I mean, with with the amount of people that DNF, um, the infamous big one that happens every year at at Talladega in NASCAR. Or if I need to, if I need to bring up something weeb, um, the things that happen in the second lap during during a race for the Immortal Grand Prix. <laughs> but next we have the Magus tier spells, and the first is Breath of Paragon. Difficulty is hard four. Range is a seven square cone. Duration is channel 2, 3 rounds. Cooldown is 4 rounds. Chant a few words in the tongue of the phoenix, and flames begin bursting from your mouth forwards in a 7-square cone. All beings within that cone immediately take 20 damage and catch on fire. You may continue to channel that fire in front of you each time a being starts or finishes their turn within the flames or, pu or passes through them. They must perform a hard 4 dodge check. On a failure, they take 20 damage and are caught on fire. 
fun. I figured we'd get Flame Breath at some point in this list. And the last mega spell, Flaming Blades of Agram. Difficulty is average 3, range is self, 15 squares. Duration instant, 6 rounds. Cooldowns, 4 round. Summon 6 flaming great swords that hover behind you. One sword immediately flies to a target and performs an arcanting attack against them. On a success, inflict 2 times weapon damage on the target. On subsequent turns, you may perform an attack with a sword as an extra action. If you are attacked while armed with these weapons, you may expend one of the swords to perform a deflect action using your arcanting. If the attack is deflected, inflict 15 fire damage and burning on the attacker. This is just Sin Devil Trigger. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> I was going to go with either that or Joachim Armster. <laughs> Uh, but next next we have Water Spells, or the Magic of the Ever-Flowing Current. Eba-Furoin Karento. We're going to be really weeb about it. <laughs> so we start with Novice, and we're back to exclusive spells with Downpour. Difficulty is hard 4, range is either 7, 8, 9, or 10 squares in a 5x5 five five field. Duration is channel, 2 rounds. Cooldown is 3 rounds. Send a shockwave from your Magiductor to open the skies above. Choose a 5x5 five five area field within range. All adversaries that start their turn in that field take 1, 2, 3, or 4d6 plus mentality water damage and perform an average 3 balance muscle check. On a failure, they are knocked prone and moved one square towards the outside of the field. Nice. You know, so basically summon raining cats and dogs. And hurt you with it. Mm-hmm. So next is Frostbite. Difficulty, Arcanting Attack, range is 6 squares, duration instant, cooldown 3 rounds. On successful cast, chill the target's skin to a brittle form. They take an immediate 1, 2, 3, or 4 d6 frigid damage. They must then perform an average 3 muscle check. On a failure, they lose their next extra action due to the pain. Yeah, that They're sounds weak. about right. Frostbite is not something to fuck with. They are weak and they won't survive the winter. Mm -hmm. So next is Healing Flow. Difficulty is average 3, range 5 squares, duration instant, cooldown 2 rounds. Upon successful cast, a rush of healing water flows toward an ally, healing them by 1, 2, 3, or 4d6 plus 5 HP. And the last novice spell is Summon Water. When one needs water, they simply need to ask. No difficulty, range is 5 squares, duration is instant, cooldown is 5 minutes. Summon a small amount of water into a square, a glass or similarly sized item. This water is drinkable and cannot be dirtied. You may have four of these waters active at once. At Magus level, the cooldown is 1 minute, and the water can fill a 3x3 three three area and bucket sized items. Fun. Imagine using the imagine using this to um surprise splash somebody. <laughs> I mean, I can see it. Uh, next is apprentice tier. Let me start with grenade of icicles. I like where this is going. Difficulty is average three, range is touch, thrown. Duration is instant, cooldown is three rounds. Inscribe a rune of greater freezing onto a grenade and throw the grenade at a target area. The grenade explodes, using the area field of the grenade, launching sharpened icicles within the field. These icicles inflict 15, 20, or 25 piercing damage, 
On subsequent turns, you may form the resting ice crystals into an ice elemental that lasts three rounds. <laughs> so if, if you get hit by the spikes, they hurt you. If you don't get hit by the spikes, well, they're going to become something that'll hurt you. Mm -hmm. So next is Harsh Blizzard, which is an exclusive. Call down a field of shattered ice and snow. So... A day in my neck of the woods. Difficulty is hard. Four. Range is either six, seven, or eight squares. Five by five area. Duration is channeled two, four rounds. Cooldown is three rounds. Summon a blizzard at the location. All beings within the area field perform a tough five muscle check. On a failure, they take two, three, or four d6 plus mentality frigid damage. On a success, they take half damage. You may channel this spell on your next three turns. If you do, all adversaries that start or end their turn in the blizzard take an additional plus mentality frigid damage. After remaining in the field for more than two rounds, the adversary's legs freeze up and they lose their movement on their next turn. Nice. And next is Waterfield. Difficulties average 3, range 12 squares with a 9x9 nine nine area. Ooh. Duration instant, 8 rounds, cooldown 4 rounds. Summon a 9x9 nine nine area field of water. The water is 2 inches deep. Each square takes 2 squares to move through instead of 1. When fire or electricity, through spells or other means... Other means... Sorry, that's a bit of a slip. Other memes. It's mm -hmm. this field... Additional effects occur. Whenever electricity hits the field, it shocks all beings within, inflicting 2, 3, or 4 d6 plus mentality, electric damage, and the stun condition. If fire hits the field, it steams up and covers the 9x9 nine nine area in a thick steam. Allies gain an auto-hit die on covert checks in the steam. Hmm. It's, there's a good there's a good setup and follow through, especially since it doesn't take long it doesn't take all that long to switch USBs. Uh, next we have adept next we have the adept tier, starting with ice ammo. Difficulty is average three, range touch, duration instant, cooldown five rounds. Summon ice ammo into a ranged weapon's clip. The weapon fills that ammo that inf inflicts an additional 5 or 10 frigid damage on attacks and shatters upon impact. The shatter inflicts 10 or 20 piercing damage on all beings within two squares of the hit unit. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Imagine giving that to the sniper. Sniper. Especially since that's a non-exclusive. So next is Maelstrom. Difficulty is hard 4. Range is self. The area of either 7x7 seven seven or 11x11. Eleven eleven. Duration is channel 1. 3 rounds. Cooldown is 3 rounds. Tear into the arcane realm, summoning a powerful whirlpool centered on you. This inflicts an instant 25 damage on all adversaries within the area field. The targets must perform a hard four balance muscle check. On a failure, they are knocked prone and moved one square towards the epicenter. On subsequent turns, while they are still within the maelstrom, they take an additional 15 or 25 damage. They may perform the test again. If they are successful, they may move out of the field. Hmm. So, yeah, this is what happens when you piss off Leviathan. You get whirlpooled mm -hmm. and die. Yep. So, next is Summon Hurricane Blade. <laughs> an exclusive. Mm -hmm. It's an Arcanting attack. Ranges melee with, with a four or six cone. Duration instant, five rounds. Cooldowns, four rounds. Perform an Arcanting attack when summoning this spell. This blade lasts 5 rounds and inflicts 20 or 30 water damage in a 4 or 6 cone in front of you. 
After an attack is used, any adversary within the cone field that was not the direct target of the attack may perform a contested dodge check against your Arcanting. If they succeed, they take half damage. And remember, cone attacks cannot be used on diagonals. They have to be used on the four cardinal directions. Mm -hmm. So next is the Magus tier. And we for and we start with Aura's freezing ray. You're thinking of an Aura Aura joke, don't. Why would I think of an Aura Aura joke? Because it's you. Except I'm not a woman. Anyway, difficulty hard four, range is twenty squares, duration is channel two, five rounds, cooldown is three rounds. Choose a target and perform an Arcanting attack. On a successful attack, launch a ray of frozen water at the target, inflicting 25 frigid damage. On subsequent turns, you may channel the spell on the target, inflicting an additional 15 frigid damage. If you channel this successfully for three rounds, the target freezes in place for two rounds and takes 15 frigid damage. Well, fuck that, this is Mr. Freeze's gun. <laughs> Yep. So maybe instead of an Ara Ara joke, I should have I should have asked for a, not to make a Arnie impression. Why don't you chill out? <laughs> so next is, and this is an exclusive water dance of mayhem. Our can this difficulty is an arcanting attack. Range is twelve squares. Duration instant, cooldown, four rounds. Launch at a target within range and perform an Arcanting attack. You may then target another adversary within 12 squares and attack. After that attack, you may target another adversary within 12 squares. Each attack inflicts three times weapon damage. After you complete all three attacks, you may land up to 12 squares away from the final target and mark all hit targets with the Frostbite spell. You know, before that last sentence, I was going to bring up one of the, what the more footwork-based form for, of um, water breathing. No, this is monk, monk. It's <sighs> it's a ninja. It's a water ninja. <laughs> Wait, are you saying Jesus was a ninja? No. <laughs> no. No, Jesus Jesus was not a ninja. That's Buddha. Get it right. <laughs> and then we and get to that, the superlative spells. And on that note, everyone should read Saint Young Men, but that's a different story. <laughs> You may cast three of these superlative spells a day, and each spell may only be cast once per day. All superlative spells have a challenging six difficulty. And there are four of these. Mm -hmm. So pick and choose careful. So first is EMP Blast. Range is self with an area of 29 by 29. <laughs> Duration is instant. Send additional energy into the air, USB, overloading the crystal inside. After channeling, a massive energy spike launches outwards. All technology within the area field is immediately shut down. This technology remains offline for five rounds. Prototypes and AI units immediately take 30% of their current HP in damage. Good way to take out mechanical bad guys. If, you're en if your enemy's a Mechromancer, this is a good way to fuck him over. Until he just revives it again. Mm -hmm. Or if he isn't using the, the summoned uh, stuff and just using the souls for other things. Also a good way to fuck over a, ar a architect. Enemy. Architect, yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course anyone who's a prototype. Yeah. So next is Strike of the Expanse. Range is touch with an area of 15 by 15. Duration is instant, three rounds. 
Touch an adversary, item, or ship, enchanting it with a mark of the Shattered Veil. After three rounds, the mark shatters, drawing forth the power of the Expanse upon the target. If the target is metallic, they take 80 pure damage and are inflicted with armor break. Everything else within the area field takes 40 pure damage and is knocked prone. A ship takes an additional pure damage if it is larger than a fighter. Additional 40 pure damage mm -hmm. if it's larger than a fighter. So if you put it on a ship larger than a fighter, the, that ship is taking 120 total pure damage. Mm -hmm. And anybody inside it's getting fucked too. Oh, that's yeah. A, that's a 15 by 15. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice. So next is Tear into the Arcane. Stra range is a 20 square straight line. Duration instant. After the rift opens, charged crystals of the arcane realm pour forth. All beings within that line take 80 elemental, all element types damage. The targets must perform a contested arcanting check. On a failure, they are inflicted with a major and minor wound. Jesus. I'm going to crush you in magic crystals. Oh, no. Um, this is a crystal version of the Daka maneuver. <laughs> yeah. So, and the last one is Unleash the Eternal Flame. Range is 30 squares with an area of 21 by 21. Duration is channel 2. Tear apart the veil that weakens magic, calling forth a field of liquid flame within the area field. Everything within that field takes 50 fire damage. Anything metal or wearing metal takes an additional 40 pure damage. The spell cannot be stopped. The tear lasts three rounds. Everything that enters this field or ends their turn in it takes an additional 30 fire damage. Anything flammable instantly lights within this field. After the spell ends, the liquid flame returns to the arcane realm. You summon a field. Uh, you summon a twenty-one by twenty-one field of liquid hot magma. Mm-hmm. So, with all that said, now now that we've examined the arc the arcane um, spell tree. I'd say th I'd say that the Thaumatech gets a little bit more ridiculous now that we know what it can do with these spells. Especially yeah. since let's not forget that some of their features allow them to kind of cheat the system when it comes to charges. Mm -hmm. So they so not only ca not only can they cast more, but they ha they have the potential to have a little bit of a safety net when it comes to the higher tier spells. Exactly. And given what we've seen with the superlative spells for, for the for the arcane realm, that can get a little ridiculous. And but I'd say I'd say that they're not ex the the Thalmatek is still is still more of an elementalist than the typical mm -hmm. wizard. Unless the, unless there's a bunch of wizard like spells in the mystic tree, but that's um that's our that's the universalist tree. So probably not as much. Mm -hmm. But with that said, that is that is going to ra there's not a whole lot to really add, so that I think is going to wrap up our look at the spell at the spell trees for the for the Arcan for the Arcan for the Thaumatech, as well as the classes for Veil of the Void. And I don't think we came across a bad class or subclass. There were certain subclasses that were a little bit less enticing, but I'd hesitate to call any of them bad. None of them were bad, and I think they were only a little less enticing because they don't suit our style of play. Some are more subdued than others, which might suit other people. 
Oh, yeah. Now, next week is going to be another two-parter, if only because what we're covering is going to be another case of there's no way we can cover this all in one go. Mm -hmm. Because we'll be... We'll be tackling skills, expertise, and the arcane the next two weeks. Essentially, all of chapter three. Skills and ex skills and expertise we're get we're going to be doing next week, and then the arcane we'll be doing in two weeks. Some of the stuff regarding the arcane we've already talked about regarding um the way spells work and how mm -hmm. spell casting is dangerous in a different way than in than in other magic systems. But since it has that and the myst and the mystic spell list, which is the more universalist um, spell list, it's going to be it's going to be a bit more involved. Plus, mm -hmm. expertise, I'd say that I I would say that is akin. Well, the expertise is akin to feats, and that's something we're not going to be able to tackle in a day. Rome was not built in a day, so we'll be fine. Oh, yeah. But that will wrap it up for this for this episode of the, of the Valley of the Judged. And next week, we'll, we can, we'll be continuing the journey, just with just no more classes. There are a couple of classes that are it that are expansions, but we're not covering that until the end. That'll be one, that'll be one big um, grab bag that we'll end up doing down the road. But I don't plan on get, getting eyes bigger than my stomach. Yeah. So until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>